Look alive, people. We got episode three coming in hot. I'm Ali Melendez, and we got to cover a lot of ground here, so we should waste no more time. Let's play that intro. Here we go. Gonna play that intro. Whenever you're ready. Guys, don't you dare ignore me. I Welcome back to the IRC studio in Oneonta, New York. Sorry, I got a little heated there. But we've been away for so long that I just couldn't wait to get started. And I know another guy who just can't wait to get started in that red sweatshirt on camera. It's Chris Turnbull. You're going to criticize me for my sweatshirt, but he's literally shilling the Mountain Dew? Come on. All right, welcome to episode three, guys. We got some decent content for you today. Um, I'm going to be reviewing Max Steel, which is, oh, what a movie. <laughs> Um, we'll get to that later, but hope you guys enjoy the show. Next to him, as always, with a great quip, it's Mike Pappas. I'm Mike, Mountain Dew man, movie reviewer, and movie debater. Come on, and man. you can't teach that. Pretty sure you can't. I tried really hard to think of something funny to intro this next person, but trust me, he does it best himself. Matt Berkland, everybody. Hello, America. This is Matt Berkland, uh, the America's Top 40. Oh, wait. This is the Oneana Movie Show. We're going to review those movies and hit them with the hind. And finally, this week's special guest to shake things up a bit, it's Austin T-800. What's up? I'm glad to be here. I'm going to win trivia. I'm going to show these guys how it's done. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about starting off these shows with some trivia, right? What do you guys think? Oh, wait, I don't care. Last week there was a tie, so you all lost, and that was disappointing. But you have a chance to redeem yourself again. The rules, again, are as follows. You must shout out your first name, or our floor manager will terrifyingly stand behind you, listen carefully to all of your breathing habits to determine who said their first name first. That person will have 10 seconds to answer at the end of which, or if someone just gets it wrong, someone else can steal. We all got it? Let's get trivia up in this b Can't say that. <laughs> yeah. All right, question one. How many guardians are there in Guardians of the Galaxy? Austin. Awesome. Let me finish, all right, Austin. Bonus Sorry. points to whoever can name them, Austin. I'm gonna go with five. Bonus point? No. That is correct. No, no, I don't no bonus. No bonus. I'll, I'll go for the bonus. Anyone steal? Okay. All right. Uh, Matt, uh, five, but ex actually it's six according to the comics. Uh, there's Star Wars, there's Peter Jason comics. Quill, Gamora, Drax the Destroyer, Rocket Raccoon, Groot, and Yondu. Fun fact for those of you who don't know, he was part of the original Guardians of the Galaxy, which debuted in the seventies. Thank you. Nobody cares. I'm not. I'm not that to Matt. Um, all right, question two. Leonardo DiCaprio has been nominated for five Academy Awards. Name three of them. Matt. Uh, for, wait, is it for his movies or is it? No, his music. Oh. Uh, the Aviator, Wolf of Wall Street, and The Revenant. Okay, okay. We might have a winner this week. Question three. What famous city is Rocky based out Matt, of? Matt. Uh, Philadelphia. Yo, Adrian! Okay, question four. What continent does Katie Heron from Mean Girls live in before going Matt. to high school? Africa. And uh, Matt, you just, if you just want to finish this one, uh, let me know who directed Gladiator. Matt. Chris. Uh, no, just no. Uh, okay, I don't know this one. Chris, Mike. Go ahead. Mike. Who's going to win? Mike. Mike. Ridley Scott. Good job. Yo, thanks. All right, all right, all right. Matt, yeah. good job, you're the winner. Thank you. Hi, right, welcome. All right, so now it's time to get down to business. It's serious business. It's Star Wars business. The final trailer for Rogue One struck, and we have our esteemed panel of movie trailer experts to break down every single second of this two-minute thrill ride. We got conspiracies, predictions, thumbs up or thumbs down thoughts right after. We all sit back and take a look at Rogue One. Jin, 
Whatever I do, I do it to protect you. So you understand? I understand. Get out of here. Our rebellion is all that remains to push back the Empire. You think you might be able to help us? When was the last time you were in contact with your father? What is this? It appears he is critical to the development of a super weapon. If my father built this thing, we need to find him. All right. How many do I need? They are requesting a call sign. It's, um, Rogue. Rogue One. The power that we are dealing with here is immeasurable. If the Empire has this kind of power, what chance do we have? We have hope. Rebellions are built on hope. Take hold of this moment. The force is strong. Make ten men feel like a hundred. We'll take the next chance. And the next. You're rebels, aren't you? Save the rebellion! Save the dream! That was a very good trailer, I thought. One thing that I really was impressed at Disney for is how they do not shove Darth Vader down our throats. They give little glimpses and teases of him, but it's clear he's not the main focus of the movie. He's not going to be in there particularly long. Basically, they did the exact opposite of what DC did with the Joker and Suicide Squad. They advertised the heck out of him, yeah. and when the movie came around, he was in it for what? Ten minutes, and yeah. not very. And there was barely any exposure to his character or anything. Well, they did the same thing with uh, Spider-Man and. Uh who, uh, Wolverine and like the X-Men Apocalypse and Civil War trailers so like even though they're a little bit in there they're going to have a major like somewhat major part into the role of things oh, I'm sure and I'm hoping James Earl Jones will come back to voice him I'm pretty oh, sure he will who else will yeah, I mean, who else is I mean, mean James Earl Jones voices Darth Vader on Star Wars Rebels which is the animated yeah, show really? so I assume he's going yeah, yeah, you know so to come back now. to this fun fact of the day um, I did think it was a little, the script is a little cheesy, especially when Forrest Whitaker yeah. said, save the dream. I'm like, yeah. that sounds like something yeah, I heard Forrest Whitaker, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a surprising thing. Like, I, I don't see him as, like, a s space sci-fi guy. Like, yeah, like, I don't, he's, yeah, I, I, I kind of agree there. I don't, I don't see that, too, with him. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've only seen him in the It's Black weird, Lord, because so. Forrest Whitaker's character is based off, is a character in the Clone Wars animated series. Really? So, yeah. So he's huh. actually been in the series before, he's just played by a different actor. Gotcha. Oh, really? um, but yeah, I actually really like this trailer with some exceptions to the dialogue. I thought some of the dialogue was a little too cheesy for me. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. it's gonna be cliche, just like those Star Wars I, movies oh, yeah. are sometimes. I, but yeah, yeah. I looked but up who wrote the script and it's the same script writer who wrote Cinderella. Yeah, yeah well it's oh, gonna well. it's gonna be the, it's it's gonna be <laughs> something like that. I mean it's yeah, gonna be some think, cliche, obviously. What do you think uh, how do you think Felicity Jones is gonna is gonna be in it? I think she's a very good choice. I mean yeah, Star Wars seems to be on a roll with getting good female actors yep. for main character roles. Who doesn't want to be in a Star Wars movie? Who doesn't want to be in a Star Wars movie? Theory of Everything, The Amazing Spider-Man yeah. 2, just to name a few, but she's, she's hot too, I think. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. She's, she's cute. She's cute. She's cute. Let's talk about the hot hot. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, come on. Um, but yeah, she was good in it. I thought the, a lot of the effects and the creatures were really interesting. It looked like just a modern day version of what I would see in episode four, episode five, right. yeah. back in the yeah. Yeah. Stormtroopers look kick ass, too. They look cool. Of course. I'm looking forward to seeing a modern day version of it. Yeah. Younger they look Han Solo being portrayed by. Well, is he going to be in? No Rogue, way. Is he going to be in Rogue I One? Doubt I, I doubt it. I doubt it. He I mean, he's going to be in. Didn't they a, cast him? For he's that? going to be in a solo. No, a solo movie. He can't movie. be in this okay, movie. Okay, no. So if they're going well, to make it, they're going to. I don't know. There's no. one thing I'm really worried about is the director, and the director did Godzilla, which I did like, but yeah. he had, 
he was able to create a lot of good moments in his movie, but it was also the majority of the movie was also a lot of boring and slow moments to getting yeah. to that final battle with the monster. Well, but, so, yeah, but I mean, yeah. like what we saw in the trailer, you saw there's a, there's a lot of action yeah. too. So yeah. I, I doubt he's going to do the same thing. Well, with that. right. Well, but yeah. build up like that's sort of the thing. Like, if you want to build up to the good stuff, you got to go through some. I just hope he gives compelling characters. Like the original Star Wars, you look back on that, they build up to like the Death Star being blown up, but right. And, like, and they still that. had action scenes yeah. right before the Darts. I just hope they build up compelling characters because in his previous film Godzilla, I don't think the characters were very compelling except for Brian Cranston, but he was in the movie very much. Right. But that's yeah. what you got to do with the, the Star Wars. Well, we're movies. comparing apples and oranges now, like Godzilla and Star. Well, I know, Wars. but same director is going to have similar so ways he handles the movies. Right. He has a point. He's right. Yeah. But hopefully he just knows it's a Star Wars movie yeah. not to mess it up because yeah. people will hate you if you mess it up. And, st and especially because that's the last uh, trailer we'll see, right? Oh, yeah. It's the last I one think it's said. Final. Well, yeah, the final one. Well, J.J. Abrams was an indication of how well we're going with like these movies, I think, will be in a safe space because Disney took it with him. And hey, it's a good start to these Star yeah. Wars stories. So. Yeah, I mean, the next one they're going to do is Han Solo and they... Clearly, have a good lineup going up. Yeah, yeah since, they, they since, there is, since there is going to be a solo, uh, you know, solo, solo Han Solo, solo movie, so that's kind of a they, mouthful. They learned but from like, the prequels. But that, like, since they're doing that, then uh, why, they won't have a Han Solo. That's in a good point, Mike. Right. I think we um, should move on. Yep. <laughs> good, good trailer, and we'll have to see the movie in December. See you together. All right, we'll be right back. So here's a movie trailer or something. <laughs> Yay. Two things are gonna happen. First, that phone over there is gonna ring. Second, you're gonna be wearing these cuffs. <laughs> Just gonna keep on ringing. Who the hell are you? I'm the guy you didn't count on. Jack Reacher, Purple Heart, Silver Star. You're a legend. What else have you heard? I need your help. Someone killing soldiers. Men that used to be under your command. It's time to start hunting. I don't know your role in this year. I promise you I'll find out. Nothing to find. Maybe I rip your arm off. Beat you to death with it. So you gotta find Reach is too close. How's it going? I don't like being followed. You know you're a dead man. One of us is, that's a certainty. Is that fear right here in your voice, Jack? What you hear is excitement. Sorry, he's not feeling well. You might want to use this one. Huh. We've been away for two weeks and you better believe that a movie or three has come out in that time. That means we have another great review segment coming your way and you do not want to miss what the guys have to say. Am I right? I mean, when I think of movie reviews, I think of the Oneonta movie show. Am I right? Ugh, Mike Start. Uh, will do. So, the last weekend I saw Girl on the Train. And, you know, it was interesting because, uh, you know, a lot of people got mixed reviews. A lot of people say, oh, it's a Gone Girl ripoff. Or, or some people that liked it say, this is better than Gone Girl. Don't, this is Gone Girl d g done right. But all honesty for me, I have seen both. I've seen Gone Girl plenty of times. I've seen, and I did see Girl on the Train. So to compare the two, I, I have to say Gone Girl was better. Yeah, to be, to be perfectly I, that's what I heard. There. I didn't see it, but I heard similar things. It, yeah, it just, it just, there was just a lot going on. There was just a lot of, like, I like to think in movies, I like to think of stuff, like, while I'm watching the movie. I don't want to think too much. I don't want to, like, really, like, really think of it. I like to see the character. The characters, though, were really good. I, th I thought uh, Emily Blunt did a, I thought she did an amazing job as, uh, as her character. She was, her character was, like, she was an alcoholic, and she... She kept stalking her her ex her ex boyfriend who is now like who's now with a woman who has a baby, and it just there's a lot of elements to it. There's a lot of there are twists which you know I like and I was kind of interested in, but but it was just all over the place and it, I don't know it it didn't feel like it was like a great thriller suspense movie and it and the ending was kind of lower to I mean I wish I would I wish I could say what happens but you know I'm restraining myself so. 
Uh, no spoilers. So, overall, I'd have to say, out of, te out of 10 Mountain Dew cans, probably a, probably a five. Okay. Probably a five. It's right. a lot of Mountain Dew. It's a lot of sugar. Yeah. I went that to... Is, uh, I love sugar, man. I went to go see uh, Max Steel over the weekend, which was a huge uh, mistake on my part, <laughs> but now you're all going to suffer with me, so I hope you enjoy that. Um, it's based on the 90s action figure. Um, the main character, Max, is about as dull and lifeless as the doll he's based on. Um, the, ro <laughs> the robot that follows him around is incredibly annoying. The movie doesn't look very good. It looks like it was made for $5. Um, <laughs> and I just want to tell you one scene from the movie real quick. He's looking on the internet because he has these, and I'm going to spoil it, but I don't care. Yeah, no, no, don't, nobody, don't, nobody's going to care anymore. Don't spoil it. Don't no, spoil it. Just spoil it. I'm not going to see it. He has these, he gets powers, and it's these, uh, like this like black liquid that comes out of his fingers. So he goes on Google and literally types that into Google, expecting to find a response. This person is an idiot. And then in a really dramatic scene, or at least I think it's supposed to be a dramatic scene, he types into Google, what am I? And I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, what you would react you if you had it. black goo coming out of your fingers? You'd probably go to the doctor like a normal like, person. Yeah, you go to a scientist or a doctor. Oh, this movie is awful, WMD. like the, one of the worst things I've ever seen. I'm pretty sure it would just get to, I think it was just a tax evasion movie, honestly. That's how bad <laughs> it was. Um, uh, but yeah. made it. Um, I don't even know some nobody. Oh, That's of course. And we don't no. bother. Let me put it this we way. don't bother to care who who no. made it. I give it negative a thousand '90s action figures out of a number not understood by human beings. Great review. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Would you like to go, guy. Matt? Uh, well, Jesus. for recent releases, I'm going to say the best for last. Um, I went this weekend, Friday night. I went and saw The Accountant, which I thought was a brilliant film. It had Ben Affleck as an autistic mercenary per se let's say he's got a set of skills even though he's like this genius mathematician this super guy but the thing that really made me relate to the character most was that he was autistic and as a kid growing up i had asperger's and that that's kind of hard to deal with so like i could relate relate to the character in that way and um just like seeing him as this badass guy thinking like, wow, this is a character that's relatable. This is a guy who's not so socially, but it's like a cool action movie. And it's got like drama. It's got everything you could look for. It's got a great cast. Ben Affleck, J.K. Simmons, jo uh, Jerry Trainer, John Bertham, the guy who played the Punisher in the Daredevil series. He's excellent. And Anna Kendrick. So like it's got a good story. It's got s great action scenes. Just it's good. It's a good movie. What else can I say, man? I'd give it a 9.9 out of 10. 9.9? 9. 9. Yep. 9.9. 9. All right. 9. All right. You saw War Dogs, right? Yeah, I saw War Dogs. I liked it. A lot of people didn't really like it. It got 60% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> it was made by uh, Todd Phillips, the guy that made Hangover. You know, all three, sadly, all three of them. Um, <laughs> but uh, he went into work with Brad Bradley Cooper's in the movie, and he produced it with Todd, Todd Phillips. And I think it was a good movie. I'm sick and tired of these superhero movies. And I'm glad I can see something that's different, you know, based on a true story about these two guys, uh, Miles Teller and Jonah Hill. They play 22-year-olds that are become arms dealers. Yep. And it just shows a different side of the war, the war that we, you know, we don't see. How, how does the military get their stuff? How did the terrorists get, uh, get their stuff? But Miles Teller, excellent as always. Jonah Hill stole, stole yep. the show, 100% stole the show. As much as some people don't want to like Jonah Hill, He's a great actor. Who doesn't yeah. want to like yeah. Jonah he's Hill? A lot of people don't. How don't people don't like he's Jonah Hill? They, they, I'm, not, I'm not a fan of him as a dramatic actor, yeah. but as a comedy actor, you know, I I like him in it. I felt I like this him. like when I saw it, I thought it was more like a Scorsese type film. Like it was about money and like uh, get out drugs and guns and all that. Well, yeah, of course, is all they they got into because they, they yeah. wanted money. They were tired. They were both being massage therapists. And, and they it were was tired like of uh, the wolf, like Jonah almost took like a uh, set like a. Uh, Sta the same role he took in Wolf of Wall Street, yeah. and that that fits him perfectly. Yeah, which works for him, which is yeah. why he, which is why he's an extra Pesci, I think. Yeah, he's doing he's doing great. Um, I say I give it out of ten. I give it eight T eight hundreds. That's what I give it. All right, all right, all nice. right. Let's uh, guess we're going to the movie arguments now. <clears throat> oh, it's over for you guys. Funny. Maybe. Well, to not go anywhere because there is a movie debate just around the corner. I think this one might be our best yet. Or maybe it'll suck. Or maybe it won't. I guess you'll have to stay tuned to find out. Nice background. It's America. I know, right? 
America. America. Okay. America. Now, I firmly believe that criticism is a very important process in becoming a better filmmaker. Wouldn't you agree? No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, thought you would. That's why I'm going to have these fools rip into the worst sequels of all time. Try to have a better argument than my movie is worse than your movie because I just don't have the time for that trash. Now, fighting to death, Chris, you have 45 seconds to start. All right, my movie is Son of the Mask, sequel of the 1990s movie, The Mask. It came out 10 years later. It doesn't have any of the same actors. It's gold, isn't it? Um, but in seriousness, um, it's about a guy played by jo uh, Jamie Kennedy who has a child and comes in contact with this mask one night when he loses his costume for a Halloween party. And mischief occurs, Loki, Odin, all these Norse mythology occurs. This movie is bad. All the acting in it is bad. The writing in it is awful. J Jamie Kennedy's character is annoying as heck. Um, and the effects, while not only bad, are scary. Like, they are legitimately terrifying to look at. And it's a kid's movie. And the original was made for adults. It has absolutely nothing of what the original had. None of the actors, writers, director, All effects, right. nothing. Time. Sounds pretty bad. Mike, you're next. Go ahead. Oh, man, I hate to bring this movie in it, but Batman and Robin, what a travesty of a Batman film. I, I'm even so ashamed as a Batman fan myself to even call this a, a Batman film. It had George Clooney, who was a horrible, probably the worst person to play Batman ever. Uh, Chris O'Donnell, eh, not great as Robin either. Arnold Schwarzenegger should never play Mr. Freeze ever, ever again. Like, ever. Alicia Silverstone, eh, eh, as Batgirl, without a doubt. And just, uh, I don't even want to talk about this anymore. I just want to get right to the argument. I can't even, I what, can't even what ponder. What can't even, ponder, can't even ponder anything else about this. All right, then. Matt, you're next. Go ahead. All right. Since someone stole my choice, I need to go on to my second choice, which was X-Men Last Stand. Yes, it did have all the great characters from the last two movies, but it kind of almost killed the franchise in a sense. It took one of the greatest storylines of all time from the comics, the Phoenix Saga, and made a mess of it. They tried adding in, like, so many mutants that couldn't even be considered like, like there was no story to it and it it didn't even focus on like some of the bigger characters like beast and angel and magneto and it just like it, it was a mess let's just put it at that and as a, an x-men fan i just i wasn't impressed <sighs> all right not impressed with any of these uh austin fire away my movie was Matrix Reloaded, the sequel to the best, one of the best movies ever, Matrix. It was terrible. I cannot believe how bad it was. I forgot how bad it was. I actually went back a week ago and I watched all three. I, I saw the first one, it was great. But the second one had none of the, none of the same things as the first one. The only thing they kept was the slow motion and they did it for 45 minutes of the movie. It was over and over again. It kept on going. It had no storyline. It was hard to follow. The characters are so bland. Neo, he's not even cool in this one. He looks, he, he, he's like a drama queen. He complains about everything. I don't know what happened. I don't know, I don't know why, why they did this to it, but it ruined the franchise because of this. And I'm ready to show you how this is the worst movie. This is the worst sequel. Time. All right, everyone has spoken. So whoever would like to comment on someone else's argument, you may begin now. See, for you, I would argue that the third one was worse than the second one because the second one at least had a little more structure than the third. Also, the third the, one sequels. The action, the action scene on the highway is legitimately a good action scene. Like, the movie is worth it just watching that. It yeah. can't be worth just that. You can, but it has, you that's, a good, that's a good element hour. to there it. There was better than that good scene same, thing, same thing as X-Men 3. There, there were some good action scenes. It wasn't, yeah, awesome. yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't entirely bad. bad. It was not entirely bad. It had a good cast. Beast was masterfully cast in that movie. Yeah, I and don't Magneto know. Magneto was great. Yeah. They had still the great characters. But they couldn't do anything with him. That's the problem. No, right? it, there were too many characters to fit in. They had to focus on, like, Jean Grey. They had to focus on Wolverine. And plus that scene at the end where he's just, like, uh, uh, like he just stabs Jean Grey. It's just, you know, it's also, kind of Also, Batman and Robin. <laughs> Normally, if you're going to have a worse sequel, it has to be 
It has to come from a good original movie. Exactly. Batman Forever yeah, is not a good original movie. Original. Uh, it was also a sequel for the Bat the Batman ones with yeah. Tim Burton. And it, it was a great movie. It wasn't even that bad. I don't even exactly. think it's that bad. He has it was Batman and Robin wasn't yeah. that bad. He has Batman nipples. How cool is that? Uh, that's not Batman cool. Nipples. That's scary. That's terrifying. It haunted my brain. It haunted me in my nightmares. And it haunted my nightmares as a kid. The thing about Batman and Robin is a perfect. Is a perfect movie what it wanted to be, and the director wanted it to be a remake, a, a creation of the si Batman. So the was yeah, Batman you know, Forever was, was at least decent. I could at least watch that other than Batman, Batman and Robin. Maybe that's what funny aspects. If you it as a comedy, it's funny. Yeah, it's supposed to Batman be. Batman Forever is, 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 is pretty now. cool too. It's pretty cool. You ever see the Adam yes, West? Jim Carrey was great as the show. Written. Where's his sense of humor? Mike, Mike. I thought I thought he was great. We're, 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 we're not talking about Batman. I know I'm right. We're not talking about Batman Forever. We're talking about Batman, Batman and Robin. So stop talking. Yeah, Batman. but uh, but at least compared to Batman Forever, at least Batman and Robin you can't compared compare to ba him. Batman you, Forever. It still can be enjoyed. Even Joel Schumacher said he wasn't the, good at making. At least at least Son of Mask could still be enjoyed with the horrible the horrible dialogue and the like goofy graph CGI that it had. It's not goofy. It is scary. I think I think it's goofy. Exactly. Son of Son of the Mask doesn't have any of the returning actors. And what was wrong with them? That movie was terrible. Nice thing was like, God, the baby songs were hilarious. Batman Forever has it's Alfred. Not, it's it has not, Alfred. Uh, uh, the same what you, what's now? his name? Um, it doesn't matter so because it still can be enjoyed. As the guy who played Loki, he was good. Now he's talking about a mask with the with the CGI. You're gonna laugh at that. It is not dialogue. It's not funny. It's scary. It is frustrating and boring and not enjoyable to get through. Come on, Arnold Schwarzenegger wasn't that bad either. When I was a kid, I liked No, he was bad. No, he was not. Dr. Freeze, that's kidding? cool. He was cool as Dr. Freeze. And no, my Thor man was a pretty good boy. Like, that's cool. That's great. That's just that's just that's listen, 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 listen. Cause I this is enough right now. Alright, Chris, you got 20 seconds to make a closing statement. All right. Just, do, just say it. All right. Not only did it have a bad director, bad writer, bad actors, bad effects, bad everything, but it didn't even have any of the original stuff like all these movies did. And that made it even worse because even if they were bad, you couldn't you couldn't enjoy people like Cameron Diaz or um, Jim Carrey from the original. You just couldn't. All right, Mike, you know what to do. You know what to say. Take it away. Batman and Robin had ele eleven, I think, Razzie Razzie nominations, and Alicia Silverstone even won worst worst supporting actress, I believe. It got worst cast, worst writing, worst. Worse everything. I can't. I can't even describe anymore how mu how worse of a Batman movie this was. God. Matt, twenty seconds begins All right. now. Um, so X Men Last Stand. This this uh, practically almost ended the franchise along with Wolverine. But like you know, there were too many characters. It almost ended a lot of uh, uh, actors' careers on this. It took stories and ruined them practically. It took a lot of junk. Tried to put it together. Doesn't work. Tried to bring a lot of characters. It doesn't work. Time. Austin. Matrix Reloaded was the worst sequel. Did you see the first one was great? This one had none of the elements of it. It was terrible. It ruined a franchise. It ruined a franchise. Franchise. That's the word. It ruined it. it that's all I got to say. It just ruined it, and it's the worst movie, and I know I'm right, and I know I'm going to win. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, it's time to make my decision. So based on the arguments presented... The winner is, it's a tie because it was all just so, so bad and a lot of words are being thrown. So okay. congratulations to all of you guys. That's all the time we have tonight. Okay. Once again, I'm Ali Melendez and this is my catchy one-liner to end the show.